Welcome to another edition of Politics and Right. My name is Egberto Willis, your host. Today, we have the honor of speaking to Carl Smith. Carl Smith is an activist. Carl Smith is an engineer. Carl Smith is a program writer. I mean, he, he does a whole lot. But most importantly, Carl Smith cares about our country. Carl Smith created a website, uh, votereducationproject.com votereducationproject.com that everybody needs to go to. Uh, he has a, 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 not a point of view, what I like to call the point of view, because it is, in fact, the truth that we all should know. Because guess what? Technically speaking, we all live by Carl Smith. How are you doing this morning, my friend? Very good. I hope you're doing well, too. Yes, I'm doing fine. Look, Carl, I, I so badly wanted to talk to you about where we stand here as in our political system. And I asked you to uh, send me your outline that pretty much defines where we've been, where we are, where we are going, where we really need to go. So I want to start this way. Let's, one of the biggest things on people's minds right now is inflation. And we have everybody, uh, specifically under, on the Trump side, uh, trying to pin this thing on the Biden administration. Tell me a little bit about what really is the genesis of the inflation that is heard in quite a few Americans. Well, the, the Republicans really want to uh, or want don't want people to think about, you know, what actually happened. And that is that COVID happened and, you know, the worst pandemic in 100 years. And it caused huge you know turmoil in our financial systems and demand and supply and all of that. Just, you know, we're, we're living through a very turbulent time. And, you know, whether uh, Biden or Trump uh, was in, in, in uh, you know, in, as president in the last uh, four years, that wouldn't have been that would have been different. You know, this is a worldwide problem, not just something, you know, this uh, with the United States. So COVID and, and price price gouging, you know, are actually responsible for, um, you know, for that, the, you know, the current high prices um, that uh, a lot of people are suffering through. Now, interestingly, uh, you point yeah, out that, and, and that's, and, you know, there, there's just no way around it. Trump would have had the same problems. Exactly. There's another point that I, you, you bring out, and that is how do we compare to the rest of the world? Uh, you would think that if Biden has the worst economy, economic message or economic prowess in the world, that maybe we wouldn't be doing as we wouldn't be doing as well. Right. Yeah. And what Biden did and, and the Recovery Act and all these things, you know, the thing, all the things that they did. Uh, caused us to come back quicker and better than all the other advanced economies. Uh, our inflation rate is going, you know, the, the economy is actually doing very well for a lot of people, you know, and for especially if you're wealthy, it's doing yeah. extremely well. Uh, it's just that there's uh, far too many people, um, you know, that are suffering, you know, from that. So, um, you know, but who is really to blame? Um you know, for that suffering? Is it is it really the, the Democrats or it's uh, the Republicans or if it's COVID or whatever, you know, the, the actual suffering? So we're, we're going through turbulent time. We cannot avoid that. I mean, you so tell me who is to be blamed, because I mean, when people go to the voting booth, they want to blame somebody for their pain and, and put hire somebody who's going to solve their pain. So right. who's to be blamed for these things that didn't start now, it is actually systemic. You made a just a very important point, Carl. You said the economy is doing well for a whole lot of people, especially if you're rich, but it's doing well for a lot of people. And then there are those who are struggling. And right. there is something systemic that causes that struggle. And, and you know, and so think about it, you know, how much better off people would be, you know, uh, if we had not extended or if uh, if we had extended this child tax credit and who blocked that? That was the Republicans. OK, that was several thousand dollars per child, you know, uh, uh, that that would have made a big difference in, in terms of these higher grocery prices and all of that stuff. You know, what about the, uh, the minimum wage? If we had actually a livable minimum wage today, how much better off would people have been prepared? There'd been so, far too, uh, fewer people right on the edge, living hand to mouth. There would be, they'd have a lot more cushion, plus they'd have actually a livable wage to, to go through this, uh, this turbulent time. So, you know, from 1968 to today, this is not like what what's they've done just recently. This has been a long-term thing. This is their battle plan and all that. So they 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 basically have been cutting the minimum wage from 1968 to today. It'd be over 17 dollars an hour. 
Amazing. Yeah, think about that. That plus uh, child tax credits, people would be better, you know, way better off, but for the Republicans. Then the other thing would be basically uh, on, you know, who has been allowing these sectors to collapse, you know, or to consolidate that eliminates competition. Cause the other thing that's happening is price gouging. So it's, it's the, you know, it's COVID and all the instability from that, but also there's price gouging on top of that. Who's to blame for that? That's the Republicans again. So the people that are suffering, it's really, it's the responsibilities of Republicans and they want to do more. You won't do better under a Trump presidency. You will do worse. Because uh, all the things that he's talking about basically will will make the poor poorer and the rich richer. And you know, studies that have come out have said just that. Like I said, our problem is systemic. Now there are two points here that you talk about: uh, make America great again and make America great for everyone. I want to combine those into explain to the population why to some make America great again, is offensive, while make America great for everyone is what we should all strive to. Right. Well, it wasn't so good for a lot of people. When you say make America great again, you know, women go, what? You know, they didn't have so many rights. Uh, minorities, uh, you know, uh, disabled people, LGBTQ, and, and the poor. I mean, the, the the GOP has had their their boot on the backs of uh, or the necks of uh, the poor, you know, literally for decades, getting the poor to do worse and worse and worse over time. But we have made a lot of progress in other areas and in, in racial relations and and uh, for with women, they have more rights today, but they still don't have equal rights under the Constitution with men. And who is responsible? Republicans. You know, that that is and I think people have to get that notion that, you know, there are a lot of policies we want to get through that would help everyone. But they stop these policies. And then after stopping these policies, they say, hey, you see, things aren't all that good under you. So you said we should be asking the right questions. What are the right questions as you see it? Yeah. And and, and then uh, back up just a second there, you know, so on the other side, uh, it's make America great for everyone. And and uh, and that's if you look at what the Democrats do, they don't they haven't been saying that they don't ex- necessarily sell their product very well. But if you look at their policies, you right. know, they, they invest in all these different things that actually not only help people, but also help business and help uh, helps a great economy. So, you know, so basically what I, I did is I looked at what, you know, what the Democrats actually did, their policies and, and all of that. And and then, you know, boiled out, you know, some some basic kind of umbrellas on, on what, you know, um, you know, what they do, how that works for everybody. A lot of people don't understand how what Democrats do helps them, you know, so it's easy for them without that explanation, without that understanding. It's easy for somebody else to come in and say, hey, you can put sand in your gas tank and everything will be fine. They just don't understand how how it works. So basically, what the questions we should be asking are like, how, what makes people thrive and what business, what makes businesses thrive? Because people, we need our businesses to do well, because that's where our products and services and most of our jobs are coming from. You know, but businesses actually need people to do well, because I mean, the poor really suck as customers. Yes. You know, they've got lots of needs, but they don't have any money. So they're not a good customer. But the more people that thrive, the more businesses that thrive, not just the, you know, the the top businesses, but, you know, our small businesses and businesses out in rural areas and farmers and everybody does better if, you know, all the businesses do better if most of the people thrive. So so basically going into that on like what, um, you know, what, you know, when you ask the right questions, you know, what does it take for people to thrive? Because that's the Constitution, you know, is the general welfare. You know, the government has to look after the general welfare. Well, to me, that that means, OK, if people are thriving and businesses are thriving, well, they've left, uh, you know, looked after the uh, the general welfare. So what makes people and businesses thrive? Well, I boil that down to like three basic areas. One is our basic public investments. Another is is uh, valuing all workers. We all need good wages and and so on. And if we don't, if we're not paid for actually doing what we do uh, or well, then then we look like a third world country where two thirds to three quarters of population is in poverty. We also need, you know, both people and businesses need, um, you know, a fair system, or else it just, you know, it just kind of goes to the few and the powerful and and all of that. So uh, the so I break down this basic public investments. What's that? You know, that's uh, you know that's education, healthcare, research, safe communities, community development, and our safety nets. 
And, you know, and, and people benefit from all those. But guess what? Businesses need healthy and educated people. They need also infrastructure. They need research, safe communities, community development, and their safety. It's the same basic set of things. So that's our basic public investments. And, you know, then the fair system would be a livable wage, uh, equal work for equal pay, uh, or equal pay for equal work, and then uh, workers' rights. And then a fair system, you know, Robert Reich, um, you know, and many other economists go into all the different things we could do to make a, you know, the system fair for small companies and, and uh, you know, people, just the average, you know, out in the, you know, out in the middle of in, uh, uh, of the America. country, yeah, and um, so we 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 can do things, and and when we make these investments, you know, a few things about it. This is putting money in every single community in the country. When we invest in education, healthcare, where does that go? Everywhere. Ironically, but, that is exactly. If you take a look at the IRS, the the the, the investment uh, bill, I forgot what IRS stands for reinvestment in, reinvestment whatever it's called. It turns out that most of that money for this bill, because the red states are the states in most needs, most of the infrastructure bill, most of all these other bills, the monies go to these states. It goes every, all over the country, but they get a, 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 an amount that doesn't reflect their people. Yeah, a disproportionate but, amount. And exactly. that's a good thing. And it's yeah, a good thing. We, a we good want thing. to do that. But if you watch what you're hearing in the ads in these areas, you would never know that. It, right. and, and that goes into one of the most important things you say, the, the welfare, the welfare of all a good make America great for all. And if, if you fix where it needs to be fixed, that's what you're doing. Now, uh, I want to switch the discussion a bit because in, 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 in your uh, write up here, you spoke about democratic socialism as a misnomer. Um, tell me a little bit about that, because I think that is something that the right tries to hammer on to on, on standard traditional Democrats. Yeah, I mean, every time we want to invest in education or health care or whatever, you know, the Republicans say, oh, socialism, they even say communism, although that's a political system and not an economic system. But anyway, um, so, you know, they, they hammer on that as if we were going to take people's uh, you know, property and uh, Means rights of production. Away. Yeah, and and that is not what uh, we're doing. If you look at these things called, I mean, you know, even some Democrats will call themselves democratic socialists. Okay, but if you look at these countries that are doing that, where are most of their products and services coming from? Government? No, no, they're coming from private <laughs> enterprise. Exactly. So if you had a blue sky and, and you know, and there's a few clouds, why would you call it a cloudy day? Why would you call it the one? The thing that it's a little bit of, mostly something else, wouldn't you call it most, you know, like a sunny day? If you have a few clouds over there, you would call it a sunny day. So these are not socialisms. These are actually sustainable capitalisms. You know, these are these aren't rigged capitalisms for that benefit the few. These are sustainable capitalisms that benefit everybody. This is not social, not the same thing as hardcore socialism taking people's property. These are creating when we invest in people's education and healthcare. Uh, and then and the research and the opportunity, um, safe communities, all these things, it creates opportunities for people. And a healthy and educated person makes far more money over their lifetime than a person that doesn't doesn't get that. And if we only give that those things to the more wealthy people, uh, we don't have enough healthy and educated people for our businesses. Our economy suffers. People suffer. Our businesses suffer. You know, it just it just absolutely makes no sense. And the Republicans no. want to cut all these things, Absolutely. No, which is crazy. And these are, you know, there's an initial stimulus effect because when you invest in all these things, it puts a lot of money at the bottom of the economy. And that, you know, so those people are spending it quickly. Then businesses, there's another point here. When do businesses invest? And when, do, you know, when, when do rich and in, in, in businesses invest? When they have more money or when they have more customers with more money? When it's they have the more customers, Exactly. It's the, yeah. So so Republicans think, OK, well, you just give the uh, the job creators <laughs> more money and they'll do it. No, the job creators need that money gets pulled in when their business plans work out. Let's make when it clear. The job create the job creators. I'm looking at a job creator right now, right. Carl. We, we, uh, we are we are job creators. Yes. The people. Money. <laughs> exactly. It's important. Yeah. Now, you wanted to segue a bit into speaking about freedoms because that really tied directly into society as a whole. Talk to me about it. And then we'll sort of close out with uh, 
lies, if you will. So let's go ahead and talk about freedoms. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, so another thing is like the, the Republicans will, will say, oh, we're, um, you know, the, the Democrats are just trying to turn everybody gay and all this kind of stuff, you know, and it's really that, you know, when, when you fight or when we fight for the rights of everybody, even people that, that we don't want to be, the lifestyles that we don't want ourselves, when we fight for everybody's rights and we're fighting for our own rights. I want to point out something, Carl, because there's something in that list that you uh, talk about. And you and, and I think people need to understand this. You would see something like the ACLU fight for somebody that they completely disagree with. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that in uh, not only for the ACLU, but how we need to think about freedom. You mentioned fighting for the groups you do not want to be a part of mm -hmm. that is how you know you really have a free society. Continue. I wanted to interrupt that because I wanted to stress that uh, it is something that Liz Cheney is doing right now. When Liz right. Cheney comes out and supports uh, supports uh, Kamala Harris and say, I don't agree with her on policy, but for the better good of the country, I understand what is of importance. Continue, my brother. Right. Well, and I think once Liz Cheney understands some of these things, I think, um, you know, and actually Republicans used to invest in all of these things, too. You know, right. um, and that's that's how, you know, after World War Two, we made all these investments that transformed America, you know, back in the 1800s, before we started doing a lot of, this, you know, at public education, all that stuff. Seventy five percent of our population was in poverty. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Republicans, you know, they can take us back there where more and more of our people will, will be in poverty, live in hand to mouth and all that stuff. But we don't want to go back there. This is out of scope, but I, I, I want to I want this. I want both Republicans, Democrats and everybody else to hear. Listen to us, not just hear us, but listen to what we're saying, because I, I give kudos to Republicans. Republicans were very instrumental in things like getting the Civil Rights Act passed. It wasn't Democrats that would have fulfilled that dream. So, I mean, there's a whole lot of credit around people change, parties change, all things change around. What we want is to ensure that we have a system, as Carl puts it, make America great for everyone. Carl, I want to move on to uh, uh, to I mean, you, you mentioned about the you know, gay rights and all this sort of stuff that that they like to use as wedge issues. We know that. But you also pointed out that one of the biggest problems in society, not society, in the way Republicans campaign right now, in the way they do things, in the way they govern, is the ability, the inability to tell the truth about reality. Please, kind of let's let's break up on that and let's close on that. I want to also talk a little bit about your video right at the end. Okay, so you know, Republicans are lying about you know uh, both what they. Uh, believe and stand for and do what their policies are. And they also lie about the Democrats and so on. And, and without a really good explanation of how what we do works, then it kind of leaves that door open for them uh, to do that. So they're lying about us being socialists. You know, we're we're not socialists in the way that we're, you know, that they're, they're defined. We're actually enabling capitalism to work for everybody. They're lying about our economy. You know, they want to they, they want you to have amnesia and not remember that we just went through the worst pandemic and all of the financial interruptions and so on, you know, in a century. Uh, and and, uh, you know, and just blame the Republic or the Democrats you know, for the current high prices. And then all of the other things, you know, the people suffering uh, from it, they don't want you to connect the dots and understand it is their policies that are making people suffer. You know, that's unnecessarily. This is a self-inflicted wound, not by the Democrats, but by the Republicans. They lie about the border. You know, they, they say these people are, you know, the, the countries are sending these people from their prisons, from their mental institution. That is plain bullshit. They, they they are not being sent. These are hardworking people coming just like, you know, most people that came to the United States. And it's because they're coming in illegally because of our broken immigration system that that uh, we finally had a chance to make some progress uh, on. And they and and uh, and then Trump uh, shot that down as well. So, you know, they're, they're lying about the border. These are these are not people coming and killing us and all that. They're, these people are, you know, when they come in the country, they're they're they're. Uh, their rates are far in terms of, you know, crimes they commit and so on. 
far less than our own citizen. I want so, to add to that. I think it's important. Yes, their crime rate is it's low relative to the uh, American born citizen. Another thing is a lot of these guys pay into Social Security, Medicare, and, then they, don't get it back. and they will never, ever get it back because they are not U.S. citizens or legal residents of the United States. So they are a net positive to keep the the, uh, the and it's a bad thing, but it's net positive to keep it afloat. Uh, uh, you also mentioned about line ab- uh, on abortion, which they do making the belief that Democrats want laissez-faire uh, ab- abortion and, and killing babies outside of the wounds, the most heinous, ridiculous things. But you know what? What we are into is making sure people remain informed. And I want to thank Carl, uh, Carl Smith, first of all, for his new website, his relatively new website, VoterEducationProject.com. And I want him to talk in, in about 30 seconds or, or, or so about his video that tries to explain some of the things that we need to really be aware of. Yeah, I just uh, redeveloped the uh, the website, so I got boiled it down to just a few uh, things. And there's one thing is a is a video uh, explaining. It's really explaining economics, but also it shows like how how bottom up economics works. And actually, uh, you know, there's some you know the flip side of that how how trickle down really doesn't work, but that's more implied. Uh, uh, through it, and it's not uh, it's not socialism. It's actually creating opportunities for people, and it actually creates more creates and saves more uh, tax revenue than costs. You know, so this this is financially, it's physically responsible. It's not wild. You know, I don't know uh, uh, some sort of economics that that the Republicans are uh, are trying to paint this out. It's basically it's it's good solid stuff. It's like a, a Republican would. You know, it's not that they wouldn't go out and borrow money to build a house or a solid investment and all that. It would, you know, even though they're conservative. So it's the same thing. When we invest in our education, infrastructure and research and and, and all of that, these are investments that pay off. Carl Smith. So VoterEducationProject.com is the basic website. And then there's a video in there, but there's also like there's our, our democratic values. You know the you know the, you know if you look at what Democrats do, this is a, a small set of things. You know, uh, I, I won't call it. A, t- I wouldn't call it a small set of things. I think it's it, it's well done. I I really appreciate that you put the work into that. But Carl, we well, have it's to- a succinct it's a succinct set of things. Let me put exactly. it that way. It's not it doesn't go. It's a, it's this one pager. Exactly. Our, our and it's basic. important. It's an important one page. We got to close here. Look, uh, folks, I want to thank Carl Smith, uh, activist, uh, engineer, founder of VoterEducationProject.com. Please uh, visit the site. Carl, thank you so kindly for being on Politics Done Right. Thank you for what you do. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.